Hello grade 12, let's attempt February March 2017's equilibrium constant question number 6. I want to look at this one because it has a reaction rate versus time graph as well as a nice KC calculation. So I've separated them out and put my rice table in here to save time so that we can do the calculation over here and then go on to the graph. Now I've also worked out this question's got iodine in it, so I got from the periodic table the mass of iodine so that we can do the calculation. So let's go ahead and read the question. Hydrogen and iodine are sealed in a 2 cubic decimeter container. The reaction is allowed to reach equilibrium at 700 Kelvin according to the following balanced equation. Hydrogen plus iodine go to 2 hydrogen iodide. So look at this equation here, 1 mole of hydrogen, 1 mole of iodine, 2 moles of hydrogen iodide. 2 moles on the left, 2 moles on the right. There is no difference between the forward and the backward reaction in terms of the number of moles of gas. And this is relevant because the first question says to you, give a reason why changes in pressure will have no effect on the equilibrium position. And this is because there are the same number of moles of reactants as there are moles, moles of products. So it's not going to affect the equilibrium position because they're both the same. Now nine marks over here, can you see? This is going to be the rice calculation, which is why I put my rice table in already before we started to save time. Okay, so we're going to need to fill out the rice table with what we know before we even look at the question. So let's go. These are my reactants, hydrogen, iodine, hydrogen iodide, and then we know the ratio is one mole of this, one mole of this, two moles of that, and we also know at the beginning there's never ever any product, so we can immediately put a zero in the product column for the initial moles. Okay, so what does it tell you? At equilibrium, there are this many moles of hydrogen. Okay, so we know the equilibrium moles. Look, we've got a column for equilibrium moles. And then here's the equilibrium moles of iodine. I'm going to put them in here as well. Do we know the equilibrium moles of hydrogen iodide? No. And it asks you to calculate the initial mass of iodine in grams that was sealed in the container. So to calculate a mass, we need moles, which we don't have. So let's see what else is useful here. If Kc for the reaction is 55,3. So we know Kc is 55,3. In all of these questions, you have to make the equilibrium expression. So we can go and make it now, or we can make it in a minute. Let's just do some calculations first before we make the Kc expression. So we don't know the initial moles. We don't know the change. But we can find the equilibrium concentration, because we have the equilibrium moles, and we have the size of the container. So over here. We are going to divide by 2 because this is moles and we want moles per cubic decimeter. So this is going to be 0 0.24, 0 0.028 divided by 2, which is 0 0.014, I think. And this one is 0 0.017 divided by 2, which is going to be calculator 8.5. Eight point five times ten to the negative three. Okay. So we know the two equilibrium concentrations, but we know nothing about this, but we can probably find this from KC. So let's make a KC expression for one mark. It's the concentration of the products, hydrogen iodide, raised to the power of their coefficient, which is to the power two, over the concentration of the reactants. Now I can't put over in this word processor without a lot of trouble, so I'm going divided by the concentration of hydrogen and the concentration of iodine. Okay, let's fill in what we know. It told you this is 55,3. We don't know the concentration of hydrogen iodide, but we do know the concentration of the other two. So the concentration of hydrogen 
is 0, 0, 0.014. Okay, this is supposed to be divided by, goodness me, this thing is very irritating when it does that. And this is 8,5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so what's happening here? We are dividing on this side, so we must multiply on the other side, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Are you following my algebra grade 12? This is going to equal the concentration of hydrogen iodide all squared. So I'm going to put these numbers into my calculator. Yes. And then I am going to get a value. I'm going to root it immediately. Okay. Okay, and so for my concentration of hydrogen iodide in my calculator, I am getting 0, 0,0811. And I'm going to keep this number in my calculator so that I can carry out the rest of my calculations using it. So this is my equilibrium concentration. To find the equilibrium moles, it's this number multiplied by 2 because this is the moles per cubic decimeter and we want the moles. So if we multiply this by two and the number's still in my calculator, I get 0, 0,1622. Okay, so the equilibrium moles of the products are always equal to the equilibrium change in products because you always have zero products when you start. So over here, this value is going to be related to these two values by the balanced equation. So this is in the ratio of 1 is to 2, so I'm going to take this value and I'm going to divide it by 2 to get my answer. 0, 0,0811 and this one over here for the hydrogen is going to be exactly the same because they're in the same ratio. Okay. So now I can find my initial moles and I want to find my initial moles of iodine because it wants the initial mass of iodine. So this is the change and this is the final. So I have to add these two together to get how much I had in the beginning. So this is going to be 0, 0,0811 and we are going to add 0, 0,017. Let me do that on my calculator. I get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,0981 moles. Okay, so now we need to find the mass. Look here, it says find the mass. So we know that equation N equals M over M, but we want to find little m. So little m equals N big M. So this is going to be M is going to equal the N, the number of moles, this value over here, 0, 0,0981, and we're going to multiply it by the relative molecular mass, which is 254, which I got from my periodic table. I get 24,92 grams of iodine. That's what I started with according to my calculation. So I hope you've been following along here. Now let's go to the second part of this. The second part of this is dealing with the reaction rate graph. So here's a reaction rate versus time graph. As you can see at the beginning, the rate of the forward and the backward reactions are exactly the same. So at this point, they're in equilibrium. Then there's a change, then they reach equilibrium, then there's a change, and then they slowly reach equilibrium, and then there's a change, and then they slowly reach equilibrium. So the questions are going to be based on what is happening here. So it says to you, what do the parallel lines in the first two minutes indicate? So in the first two minutes, the two lines are parallel and together. 
So the system is in a state of equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium. And it's dynamic because things are changing, but they're staying the same. Staying the same. There are two reactions, but the rate of both of them are equal. Okay, state two possible changes that could have been made to the reaction conditions at T equals 2. So let's come over here on the graph, T equals 2. Look, the both of the reaction rates, the forward and the reverse reaction rate, both shot up immediately. So my brain immediately says, someone added a catalyst, because that's what the catalyst does. It speeds up both the forward and reverse reaction. Now in this reaction, what else can speed up reactions? Changing the temperature. What else can speed up the reactions? Increasing the concentration. And in this, it's gases, so increasing the concentration is pressure. Why is increasing the pressure the correct answer? Because both of them changed exactly the same way. There's going to be a difference in change with temperature because one reaction is endothermic and one reaction is exothermic. Whereas these two have got the same number of moles of gas, both forward and back. So they both are going to be affected equally. So my two answers are you added a catalyst and it's a positive catalyst or you increased the pressure. Then it says to you, the temperature of the equilibrium was changed at T equals 4. Okay, now look here at T equals 4. Both graphs are dropping, but the forward reaction, which is the solid line, is dropping more than the reverse reaction. So we know the temperature was decreased. Okay. How do we know the temperature was decreased? The temperature was decreased because the reaction rate slowed down. An increase in temperature will always um, give more particles, more activation energy, and so therefore it's usually going to speed things up. But, but one thing will be sped up more than the other, the uh, forward or the reverse reaction, depending on if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So here, what do we know? Let's tell them what we know to get all three marks. The temperature was decreased, and the rate of the forward reaction was affected more. This means that the backward reaction was favored. Can you see that? The back backward reaction was favored when the temperature was decreased because it wasn't as affected. So this means the backward reaction, if it's favored by a drop in temperature, the backward reaction is endothermic, which means the forward reaction is exothermic because it was affected more. Okay, It was not favored. The backward reaction was favored. So the forward reaction has to be, did I write here exothermic? The forward reaction has to be endothermic because the forward reaction was not favored. The forward reaction is endothermic because it was not favored. Okay, Jeez, you've got to be careful what you write here. How will this influence the Kc value? This is going to decrease the Kc value because if the forward reaction is not favored, then you're going to get less product, so Kc is going to decrease. So now what has been happened at 8 minutes? At 8 minutes, the rate of the forward reaction is drastically affected, but the reverse reaction is not drastically affected. So to affect the forward reaction that drastically, you have to have removed reactants, which are iodine and hydrogen. And I think we are at the end of the question. Hopefully, You've followed along and know what's going on. And I will speak to you again.